I mean, we started making names right away. And we, I loved it. I was robbing drug dealers, and taking their gold right off their neck. And the shit we did, you know, who's going to call the police on you? A drug dealer? I can identify with anything that was normal, to be honest with you. But I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. 99% of the time, you're going to disagree. Just the like the Donnie Brasco situation with Lefty. Yeah, who are the reason why they figure it this way. You brought this guy around, he ratted on everybody, and he ratted on you. You might turn around and join him and rat on us, so we get rid of you. There's no connection between there and there, and they get rid of you. Welcome to this episode of Chatting with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks, and today we're going to talk about Lenny, the enforcer for the Colombo crime family, who took a detour and started acting, and he was in The Godfather, if you guys didn't know. What's good, everybody? Shout out to Tommy, Ronnie, Alan, Luca. How are you? Shout out to everyone who watches my show. I appreciate you taking the time. So I got some things to show you. So Lenny Montana, he was a Colombo crime family enforcer. You guys might know him from The Godfather. So Lenny was... He was a wrestler. Yeah, he was a real mobster. He was in the Colombo crime family. He was underneath Joe Colombo. So he started as a wrestler and he would be doing shakedowns and things like that. That's him on the right. This is the famous scene that he was in. So I have a story to go along with this. Let me get it. Hold on one second. All right. The enforcer of the Colombo crime family became a memorable character in The Godfather. When the audience are captivated by an actor's performance in a movie, it's common to describe them being born for the role. However, few actors uh, were tailor-made for their part. That Lenny Montana as Luca Brazzi in the legendary film 1972 Godfather, according to Vintage News. Montana was a mob, st mob enforcer before playing one on the big screen. Not even the most dedicated method actors could claim such authenticity before preparing for a role. So he used to sit around and tell them stories. Um, but before Montana worked for the mob in film and in real life, hold on a second. Let's see what the hell I was reading. All right. Before he worked for the mob in film in real life, he was born uh, Leonardo Passaferro in 1926 in Brooklyn, New York. His first successful career was professional wrestling, wherein he performed in a Grady outfit, a zebra kid, his name was, noted by Vintage News. However, you'd be silly to make fun of him. In his prime, he was over six feet tall and weighed more than 230 pounds. It was his hulking figure that no doubt helped his secure his job as a mob enforcer in the 60s. And only a matter of time before he ended up in front of the camera. So this dude was getting rolls. What's up, Jake Costanza? How are you? Yankees for life. What's good with you? I appreciate all you guys taking the time to watch my show. 
So today, you guys know we're talking about Lenny Montana. This dude was the real deal. So it says, uh, before filming of The Godfather, uh, commenced before the actor was cast, Don Corleone's enforcer, Luca Brasi, while um, in search continued for the small yet important role. Some members of the mob in New York City were hanging around the production as part of the deal. It was set up by the film's producer, Al Rudy, in order for the crew to shoot there. Uh, Mafia Don happened to be on the set that day, along with a massive bodyguard, Lenny Montana. When the director, Francis Ford Coppola, saw him, he knew that he was perfect for the part and he cast him immediately. Um, as it stated, Vanity Fair, Montana would uh, cast and, he would tell the cast and crew wild stories from his experience as a criminal underworld. Associate producer uh, Gray Fredrickson recalled, he used to tell us all things like he used to be an arsonist. He would tie tampons to the tail of a mouse, dip it in kerosene and light it and let the mouse run through the building. Or he would put a candle in front of a cuckoo clock. And when the cuckoo would pop out, the candle would fall over and start a fire. However, Montana apparently uh, would have a massive, uh, massive heart in the massive frame. One story goes when Rudy's secretary, um, Betty McCurt, uh, broke her watch. Montana returned a week later with an antique diamond encrusted watch along with a uh, written not to wear it in Florida because, because she might get robbed for it. Even though Lenny Montana's role as Luca Brasi was relevant uh, brief is memorable. However, according to New York Post, the wrestler, enforcer, actor required some extra attention to get over his nerves of being a major film and interacting with Marlon Brando. This prompted the director, Francis Ford Coppola, to turn to James Kahn, who played Sonny Corleone, the godfather, to get Montana to loosen up. He stated New York Post uh, Khan had a wicked sense of humor, so he um, he planned he had planned for Montana to play um, Brando, and he was shot. His scene with him speaking to the Post Khan recounted how uh, he restrict he restructed he instructed uh, Montana to stick his tongue out when his character Don Corleone. When his apparently a uh, piece of tape that Khan fashioned with the words F you. Understandably, Montana was reluctant. However, he ultimately went along with the plan, which ultimately got the cast and crew rolling with laughter. This apparently was enough to calm Montana's nerves when he was able to shoot one of the most famous scenes ever in the movie. And that's the scene when he's, um, Choking the dude. This one right here. Yankees for life. What's good, bro? Costanza, how you been, man? I see your uh I see your videos. They're pretty dope, man. You have a lot of history behind your videos. What's good, Richie? How are you? Cindy, how are you? Man, I remember the term mafia wasn't supposed to be used and they, and they changed it. Yeah, they changed it. So people don't know, but um, Joe Colombo had a major role in overseeing the production of, of um, The Godfather. And he had people like Lenny Montana around to make sure that they did their job right. And I'm sure he had others. He had a lot of people placed throughout the set. I believe he did. Yeah, Jay. Go check out Jay Costanza's um, channel. He has a lot of good information about Chicago outfit people. He's sat through 
different um, outfit trials, like the Family Secrets trial and things like that. We did a couple interviews. Check them out on my channel. Go check out his channel. A lot of good information on there. No, he's not still alive. I have a picture of his grave. I believe he died in um, 2004. Yeah, a lot of people are um, dying. James Kahn. There's another case right here that I'm reading. It says ex banker, ex bank manager turned gangster, um, lived luxury life off cocaine, uh, heroin empire. She got caught. So there's a picture of her <laughs> with her makeup all done up. And then there's a picture of her in her mugshot. Check this out. I'll drop the link for Costanza if you want to jump on here, man. You're welcome to. So check this out. I have a video to play for you guys, too. So this is her mugshot on the right. That's her all done up on the left. Sazim Asgar, 37, worked in corporate banking with her Royal Bank Scotland. Can you guys see that good? Um, Bank of Scotland. The newest before she joined the Sniper, the drug line. An unemployed husband, Rashid Hussan, 35, the pair preyed on vulnerable addicts in, in Rosh, Rosedale, Greater Manchester, and flooded the streets with heroin and crack cocaine under living luxurious lifestyle. Splashed out designer Rolex watches, clothing, two pedigree cats. They were found alongside drug paraphernalia when the cops raided their home in December. More than 20,000 in cash was hidden throughout their luxury apartment. $1 million developed in Brantford. Some was on display. This is her boyfriend. Damn, look at them eyebrows, man. Holy shit. <laughs> man, I got to go look up the channel. <laughs> I'm in the middle of something, bro. I can't be dropping channels while I'm in the middle of a story. You guys can follow Costanza, go right to his channel. If someone can, drop his link in the chat. I'm trying to read you these stories. I can't go checking channels and dropping links and shit. Um, a total of 10 mobile phones were found, which contained marketing text and tagline, sniper line active, best gear in town. All right, we got to stand on the sniper line active. Best gear in town. <laughs> stand on the sniper line active. Best gear in town. Damn, you got to shut the background out, bro. I muted your mic, Costanza. You said you sound high on opiates. That's funny, bro. I muted your mic, Costanza. That's funny, mad dog. High on opiates. That's funny, bro. I muted your mic, Yo, you got to shut it off in the background, Costanza. You have it playing in the background. Hey, uh, Joe Mad Dog, get in the bathroom, bro. There ain't nobody high here but you. <laughs> how does how does your voice sound like you're on opiates? Do they have a test for that? Is there a test? You sound high like you're on opiates, my dude. I got an opiate voice. Is that right? Where do you get that at? Where do you get an opiate voice? <laughs> Fucking crazy, man. Costanza, did you shut off the background? Yo. Costanza, did you shut off the background? No, not yet. What no. do I get? Oh. Yo. Shut YouTube off, bro. No, not yet. 
You got to shut YouTube off. Don't worry about YouTube. You'll be in StreamYard. You'll be able to hear everything and all that and see the comments and all that shit. Just shut YouTube off. Give me a thumbs up when you're good. All right, cool. I was hearing an echo. <laughs> they said I got a. They said I got an opiate voice. That's crazy. I never heard of that before. Did you ever hear that, bro? No, bro. Where do you get an opiate voice at? I've been sober for a long time, bro. So, I mean, if you guys got problems out there, there's places to go out and get help. You can get help just like I did. You don't got to be stuck in the cycle of addiction. Or you don't have to be a scumbag your whole life either. You can go get help. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Stax, I want to ask you, man, bro. you got any traveling plans coming up? For just going to uh, New York City soon. Okay. What's that, just a short drive? Not what's going on out there. Yeah, it's not far at all. It's about an hour away. I got some uh, plans to go to New York City. Alan, you know what I'm saying, right? I'm from New York. I know when someone's on pills or dope. <laughs> you, if you can hear it in someone's voice, you're fucking good, man. They should hire you in the police department then. <laughs> Cause shit, you're you're a fucking uh, gem in the rough. If you can tell when people are high, because I'm sober as hell. And uh, God bless you, bro. Keep coming. But anyway. Yeah, well, what's good, man? It's all good, bro. Just uh, tuning into one of my favorite shows. Um, I really liked when you were in Chicago how we had a, a you know a couple hours to, to hang out, and we did you know we did some filming. Yeah, it was dope, trip. man. It was great to meet you in person, you know. Yeah, a lot of you don't get to meet a lot of people, man. And I'm about my shit. I follow through with things. I went to Chicago. I went to Minnesota. I go to different places. And like all these negative people, like this scumbag in the chat, get in the fucking yeah. bathroom. I don't yeah. got time for negative bullshit, man. Absolutely. Go hit a meeting, my friend. Maybe you'll get maybe you'll get some help with that. Yeah. Yeah, I love how you tell me get in the fucking bathroom. You're living bathroom. in it. Yeah, like, get in the fucking bathroom, bro. Have fun in there scrubbing the fucking toilet, you trash bags. Yeah. Your channel has... I really the, don't care, man. Like Your channel has the least amount of drama from all these other clowns. Yeah, I try to stay far away from it, man. I try to stick to the script and, you know. Yeah. I uh, enjoy your guy, Zay. Oh, good. Dude, shop Monday, forget about it Friday. I like your co-host, Zay. Yeah, he's awesome, man. He's uh, he's always been good with me. Yeah. Um, maybe Shit, I have uh, another thing I want to show you guys. Sure. Right here, I want to show you guys this video real quick. All right. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. The guy must have diarrhea in his pants when I told him that he was so scared that he ran out and got the five thousand dollars. Now, that show you the respect of the fear that they have for this, this man right here. Joey Cantalupo gave evidence against another New York crime boss, Funzi Thierry. Funzi Thierry is the, was the boss of the Genovese family. Now, this one here is a meek and humble man. He has nothing to look at. He, uh, I wouldn't say... Right here, bro. <laughs> five foot nine and weighed 140 pounds. Nothing, man. I was partners with him. Is he before the chin? And in my business enterprise, Funzy, he was in the um five family when they did the five family trial. His name was Louis Laraca. He was he was the boss, like before the chin, I think. He's a okay. Man's respect. Also, oh, the commission case. In the Genovese family. Yeah. He has his own crew. He's, He's the one that had like a heart attack during the commission case. They took him out in the stretcher, remember? Oh, wow. No, I don't remember that. Wow. 280 pounds. The monster of a man. You think the jury would show him some sympathy sympathy? And I ran into Come on, man. You don't. Know, they gave him a hundred years, didn't they? That's what funds you were behind on the ring. Here's this little man. 
Stacks, I'd rather hit him in the pocketbook than put him in jail. What do you think? Going with the money on it, cut his balls off. This little nothing here. I'd rather not be involved with none of it. <laughs> and Louis says, did you see the old man? Hit him in the pocketbook, man. They hit it. They always do that. And they don't end up paying their fines, just like Michael Francis. He never paid none of his fines. Tell me what he said. They hit him with millions in fines, and he never paid it. How do they get away without without paying these heavy fines? When I told him that he was so scared that he ran. I have no clue, man. Now, does that show you the respect? If you don't pay a parking ticket, they'll suspend your driver's license. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. They have ways around shit, man. I mean, some of these guys don't pay their fines they and they get away with it, you know? Did you know that Lenny Montana was a Colombo crime family enforcer? No, I did not. But, boy, he sure looks like one. Wow. Yeah, he was the real deal, man. And uh, he was a wrestler. He was out there beating the shit out of people wow. back in the day. That's him on the right. He's huge. Yeah. How old was he when he passed away? I don't know. Let me check. Poor guy probably had a heart attack. He's so big, man. Probably. You don't really hear about <laughs> this guy, do you? Not too much. He was born in 1926. He died in 1992. He died in Lynnhurst, New York. He was born in Brooklyn. Natural causes. So how old is that? 66. He was 66. Oh. Yeah. Doesn't say. 66 is pretty old, man. So. <laughs> well, in that way, no. Forget about it. What's good with you, man? Maureen, how are you? Yo, people are nuts, dude. <laughs> you know that? I've noticed, like, people on the internet are fucking nuts, bro. Like, <laughs> literally. They are they lost their fucking mind, bro. Yeah. They got nothing, to better, nothing better to do, too, most of them. Shit, back in the day, you would die yeah, when you were know. what? Um, your, your average age of living was was uh what in, in your 40s back in the day in the 20s and 30s yeah. Yeah. back then most you of the men lived to be old man dead. right what did you say i said back in the old days most of the men died from heart attacks now it's cancer you know man there's all kinds of things going on it's crazy. Just people, the, the complaining that's going on is insane. Like, they say 30s is now middle age. 30s? I don't know. Is that true? Sounds young to me. Shit, man. then I'm past my, past my prime then, I guess. <laughs> Stack, you look great for your age, bro. Thanks, man. I'm about to be uh 44, matter of fact. Where December? No, May. My oh, birthday's in May. Okay, you got some time. Yeah. Oh, so someone asked where I was when I went to Chicago. I was out. Uh, where did you bring me? The Heights, Washington Heights, or something like that, right? Well, we were in the Grand Avenue neighborhood, driving around. Uh, we went to Greek Town, and then we uh, we hit Richard's Bar. We went down to Rush Puzzle Fortress. Yeah, we went to the uh, Fortress. Kozo Compound, the Kozo Fo Fortress. That's where uh, all the guys you know, used to hang around out. that. I heard from some neighborhood guys that back in the day, on, on any given night, there'd be 50 to 75 guys all hanging outside, just hanging out. That's like why, a small army. Why do you think they had that? Why did they have that wall around? Were they scared of people bombing it or something? No, the, at, one t at that time... Uh, Kozo was the, I think, the only guy in the city to have, like, a, an indoor pool. So that brick wall you see is, like, basically covering in the entire pool. So nobody could, like, uh, I guess, look in. I, I don't know. 
Said I'm 34, more wrinkles than you, Stax. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I started working out, man. I do push-ups every single day. I um, I got some things in the works you guys are not going to believe once I drop them. I've been really working hard every day, man. I wake up, I'm on a grind. I got a certain schedule. I've uh, I've been hitting all my marks, too. So nice. things are really going to start progressing. You guys will see. I got some major interviews lined up. Oh, look forward to it. Stax, how long have you had your show now? I forgot. How many years has it been? Uh, this is the second year. Okay. Boy, time goes by quick, huh? Two years. Yeah. Two years, man. So last year I was like really, really grinding. And this year is the same thing, man. I've been about my business. I'm trying to get somewhere, you know? Yeah. And it's and people think it's like just YouTube. YouTube has nothing to do with what I got going on. If you guys don't know, I got a book that I've been working on, and I'm hopefully I'll be done with it by around January. Hopefully, if I can maintain the same schedule everything will be good you're on you know, pace. things happen so january's right around the corner yeah. bro congratulations yeah it is bro it's it's gonna be good you gonna add some pictures some old photos in the book yeah yeah That's always cool it's gonna be real cool man it's about my life story it's about some of my life but it's more detailed so i did um a couple interviews with partners in crime podcast and we went over my life story but there's going to be more details in this book like i've been i've been going over it and putting in more than just what's there you know what i'm saying yeah yeah very good man nice that's that's got to be very rewarding yeah, too when you're finished man cindy it's gonna be Wait till you guys see what, what I'm working on. Yeah, I can't wait, man. I wish I could just brag about shit and be like this and that and this and that. But fuck it, man. You guys will see it once it drops. Things Can you have, give us uh, any hints or no? I'm just blessed. Can you give us any hints or no? Uh, <laughs> I could give you a hint on something I'm going to drop after this live. I'm going to drop an uh, interview I did with Ori, Ori Spado. And he talked about his friendship with Sonny Francis. And then he on uh, another one I did with him, he talked about Suge Knight. Some run-ins he had with Suge Knight and uh, Haitian Jack. That was his name, right? Hey, Stax, that reminds me. Have you thought about maybe bringing on some, some rappers, some of these rappers that are out there? You know, with all the shooting and gangbanging going on, have you thought about bringing on some of those guys on your show or no? I don't know. I really didn't think about it. Does your family have any history in the mafia? No. I haven't really looked far back. My grandmother was from Italy, though. Like, she was fresh off the boat. But I don't know if she had any dealings with people like that. I haven't. I was a gang member in the streets. I wasn't trying to be no mafia guy you know i'm hoping i don't catch covid bro you get vaccinated yeah shit's rough you know you gotta cut back on those smokes cigarettes yeah hey i like cigarettes man that's like my only vice cigarettes and coffee you yeah. know yeah. What's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with that. Yeah. What do you like? in 20 Dunk love, big foot. What do you like, Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks? No, I make my own coffee, man. I don't go out and buy it. I just make my own. Yeah. You don't got to stand in line like an asshole for 30 minutes to get a coffee. Nah, I just make my own coffee. I like hazelnut creamer, and I don't put sugar in it. None of that. I just use creamer, coffee, and that's it. No sugar, huh? Nah, man. The, the creamer has enough sugar in it. Does it? Yeah. Yeah, man. I was in 20 Love. They disbanded that gang in the late 90s, early 2000s. 
is no more. It it got like absorbed into another gang, but they're still around. Um, the Los Salitos in Connecticut are pretty big and they're around pretty deep in Hartford. But I don't fuck with the gang life no more. I'm a good dude. I try to do the right thing now and I try to help people and that's what I'm here for. But I have some really good interviews going to be dropping. This guy, Chris Curtis, the dark side of Orange County, California. That one's going to be a really good one. He had a life sentence in prison for shooting two people. He, they ended up changing the law. He, he changed his life in prison, and he is back on the street doing the right thing. So I'm going to be dropping that interview. Maybe tonight I'll drop it, and you guys will see what's up. That sounds really interesting. Yeah, man. And another guy I interviewed, this guy, he said he was in prison. He was running a, a white prison gang in California. He said a black dude comes in there with racist tattoos all over him, right? A black dude now. Black dude comes into prison, racist tattoos all over him. I'm talking about Klansmen, swastikas, all this crazy stuff, right? The black dude comes to the white dudes and says, I'm Sonny Barger's son. Sonny Barger, wow. And, and so you got to see that interview to watch what happens to the kid. Stay tuned. I'm going to be dropping that one this week. And uh, it's like, wow. Once you see these, you're going to be like blown away. Yeah, nice. Can't wait, bro. Yeah, man. Definitely. I'm going to be dropping something right after we're done here, man. I'm about to get going. I got some things I got to do, and I got to take a piss. Hey, you look but good. But I appreciate you everyone. Good work, man. Let's Thank keep you. your touch, Dex. Thank you, man. Definitely, 100%, man. Shout out to you guys. Thank you all for joining me, and I'll be back on later. I'm going to drop one of those interviews, and you guys can check it out. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you can get my videos every time they drop. Till next time. Peace. Thanks, bro. Thanks. Peace out, everyone.